Coming out to deflect the danger away and again using the ball with accuracy. Just about kept in by Michael Rice. Now he fires it forward down towards the full forward line. Full of threat in there. They compete for it. Eventually back to the goalkeeper, Brendan Cummins. Huge one forward beyond Benny Dunn. Inside to Noel McGrath. Angling this one in. Pa Burke, goal scorer after 55 minutes. Having to go backwards in order to go forwards, it seems. John O'Brien now, 65 metres out, pursued by two, three Kilkenny players. Still John O'Brien, but life is so difficult trying to get it up onto his stick. And the end, the referee blows his whistle and gives a free in. And you'll judge by the uh, demeanour of the crowd and the sound of the crowd. They're not in complete agreement with that. Owen Larkin going back to help. The tackling has been ferocious on both sides since the start of the game. And it, you know, Isn't it what you expect? It's what you expect, but you know the level of fitness and the intensity on both teams. And now, temporarily, this one from Owen Kelly to just put three points between them again. This one on the 60 of the 45-metre line. As you can see, pretty central. Shouldn't miss. Doesn't. Seven for Kelly. So now 2.14 to uh, 1.14, a goal the margin, and Kilkenny are about to bring on John Mulhall, who is now studying at Queen's University, former UCC player, and Richie Hogan, the goal scorer after 49 minutes, comes on. Brian Hogan and the selectors don't tend to use that many substitutes during a game. That's just the second they've used. Here's David Young going back. Knocking it forward confidently. Under it here, Paul Murphy. Needs to go back, needs to keep it away from John O'Brien. Succeeds in both tasks. That's Michael Fennelly going down. They're all wrestled for possession there. Yeah, great catch there by Michael Fennelly. And Paul Murphy, you know, cleared that ball. He's had a super game um, at left half back. I'm not sure how much hurling he's ever played in that position, but he's played really well. But look at Michael Fennelly here. Yeah, catch. Really taken well there, David Young was up against him. I remember uh, Paul Murphy playing wing half in the opening match of the championship, which was against Wexford at Wexford Park, the beginning of the journey for uh, 2011. Yellow card issue there to David Young. Henry Shefflin taking the free. Seven points for Henry Shefflin in this final. And it's now 2.15 to 1.14. And there's another change, a final change being made. And uh, coming in for Tipperary is John O'Neill in place of John O'Brien. That was a change they made also in the semi-final against Dublin. Owen Kelly trying to get possession there. Hasn't had the greatest of finals on Kelly, but maybe it'll finish yet for him. He's challenged high. Back it comes. Out there as far as Benny Dunn, ready to take off past JJ Delaney. Still Benny Dunn, inside to the goal scorer, Paul Burke, went to ground. Benny Dunn goes after it, Tommy Dunn, Tommy Walsh trying to flick it away. Benny Dunn trying to bullock his way forward, and the referee blows his whistle, and it's got to be a free out. I think he threw the ball, I think, was it, or <clears throat> at the end of it all, but good run by Benny Dunn. Paul Burke slipped just there, maybe when he was gone inside, Brian Hogan, and... Yeah, we didn't see it from that particular angle there, but I think that was the call. You see here now, I think he just throws it. Oh, he flicked out with the hurl, so maybe over carrying. Free out to Kilkenny, David Herity is going to take it. Hoping to win his first All-Ireland medal on the park. He's got two All-Ireland medals already as substitute goalkeeper to uh, PJ Ryan. From the puck out, from the free rather. Henry Shefflin's after it. Trying to roll it up onto a stick, succeeds again. Immediately surrounded by a whole group of tip players. Brendan Marr, number 21, in the thick of it there too. Garrod Ryan, number eight. Back out it comes towards Michael Rice. The hand pass to Henry Shefflin. He gave it away this time. Signaled his intentions, and onto it came Brendan Maher. He's made a lot of ground. Hand passing it here to Stapleton. Way up with the attack. In as far as Patrick Bonner Maher. Tip looking for another goal. They'll have to be... Satisfied with a free in on the 20-metre line with uh, just about three minutes, maybe under, still to play of the 70. And I'm sure we'll have a minute or two added on as well. So in total, perhaps four or five minutes left to play in this All-Ireland final. And the gap 
is four points. Yeah, big call here for Owen Kelly, but you know I think he'll take the point, get back to one score. It makes sense. Uh, There's a lot of Kilkenny bodies on the line. It's a little bit far out. Well, Johnny Dooley back in '94 had a similar call. He went for it. Don't remind uh, certain people from Limerick. That's Kelly's eighth point. And I think they've all come from freeze in this match. Yeah, well, it's hard. A of scoring from play. After watching the balance of the match, it's hard to believe Tipper were in a goal. You know, Kilkenny looked at different times they were going to pull away, but Tip kept battling, battling, and it just shows you when you are the All Ireland champions, you know, you don't give up your crown easily. People have been telling me it could end in a draw. There hasn't been one since 1959. Next couple of minutes will tell that story. Richie Power releasing it there to TJ Reid. And the final shot's gone over the bar. Remember when he came on in the All Ireland final against Waterford in 2008, he came on and scored four points in that game. They were all stars that day. They were all wearing Kilkenny shirts. 2 16 to 1 15. Looking like Kilkenny, can tip, however, spoil the day for them. Nicely in, Paul Burke, has got one. Oh, he's well hooped. Cross came Noel Hickey, Burke's after him again. JJ Delaney likewise, number seven. Out it comes to TJ Reid. And TJ Reid back inside his own 13-metre line. Drives it away down for Kilkenny. All the way down where it's collected there once again by Tipperary. And Torek Maher, centre-half back at this stage, fires it in. Tip needing a goal, can they get it? Is there a final twist in the story here? Again, it's Kilkenny who deny Tipperary. And out with Michael Fennelly getting it away down the field. Huge one down. What great pace and energy there is being expended in this game. Out to Michael Fennelly, players are looking tired. Richie Power carefully hand-passing it to John Mulhall, and Mulhall hits it high, but it's not quite on target. Just about a metre wide of the left-hand post. Two minutes of added time to be played, and we're into it now. Kilkenny, who came into the match as outsiders, are that close to winning back the Liam McCarthy Cup. Richie Power, son in the eyes of Brendan Maher, takes it. His team four points behind, they need a goal for starters and they need to get it quickly. Can they get something out of it? Well blocked down there, that shot by John O'Neill. And away comes Brian Hogan, great clearance by the captain, who's played a captain's role, given great leadership today. David Young now, under pressure into the centre, again towards Brendan Maher, on as far as Garrod Ryan, and this shot by Garrod Ryan is over the bar. Second point by the midfielder, and it's back to a three-point difference, a goal between them, 2-16 to 116. Yeah, Kilkenny look out on their feet, there's the Lee McCarthy Cup there, but Kilkenny look out on their feet now, and you know, minute to go, the next possession vital, and Tipperary still hanging in there. Tip need to uh, hang in there, as you say. They've got to get a goal. They've got to get possession very, very quickly. They've got possession. It's Owen Larkin. And Owen Larkin puts it over the bar. His second point of the match. That is surely enough now for Kilkenny to win back the title. They may have lost it in the drive for five back in 2010. But in 2011, Kilkenny have been the better team in this final. And they're attacking again. Down it goes deflected back out once again Brendan Maher back as far as Michael Cahill little hand pass slipped in there as far, far as Patrick Maher away they go Patrick Maher down into the forwards once again but surely it's too much for Tipperary at this stage we've nearly played the two minutes of added time and the referee has blown his whistle and Kilkenny have won back the Liam McCarthy Cup Kilkenny are the champions for 2011. Brian Hogan, Brian Cody has done it. His captain, Brian Hogan, has given the leadership on the park. It's been a wonderful team effort, and the emphasis has been on team this afternoon. So Tip are denied the two in a row, just like the Premier men stopped the drive for five 12 years ago. Tipperary players absolutely deflated all over the pitch. It's been a remarkable comeback for a team beaten by eight points last September in a shattering experience. The shattering experience today belongs to Tipperary. 
It's been a stirring display of character, of spirit, of craft, and of course of scoring power as well. And the Cats have power to victory. Henry Shefflin has just won his eighth medal. Brian Cody, manager in his 11th final, has just won his eighth title as boss. He is the most successful manager in the history of hurling at this level. What a performance in front of over 81,000 people at Croke Park this afternoon. Eight medals for Shefflin, eight medals for Eddie Brennan and Michael Kavanagh, one of the subs today, and of course the fullback, Noel Hickey. What a performance, Michael. Yeah, absolutely, Gerard, fantastic. And just those four players you mentioned, what service they've given to Kilkenny over the years, fantastic. And what an achievement to win eight All Ireland medals. Um, but you'd have to say, I, I would think this is one of the sweetest ones for Kilkenny. To win the four in a row was huge, but they beat beaten last year, you know, when there was so much hype about the five in a row, and then to come back this year, and you know, I think a lot of people felt it was a very 50-50 game coming into it, but you'd have, I wouldn't leave Tipperary as a pundit. I thought you know, they hadn't done anything to deserve to be dethroned as favourites. But I, you know, I felt Kilkenny could win it. Um, after the league final, I was here, a lot of Dublin people and everyone else said Kilkenny were gone. And you know, I fought their corner that night uh, and uh, had a few bob on Kilkenny, a 3-1 that night to win the All-Ireland. So, you know, a fantastic win, a great, great character. But you'd have to say, you know, at different stages to win six, seven points, you think they were going to pull away, but Tipperary just without a forward line function at all uh, you know, got back to three points and, let, and kept themselves in the game and that's a tribute too to the, I think, the quality of their team and you have to remember too they're five years, four or five years at the very very top as well on the go um, year in year out and that's taken its toll as well on such a young team but you, a you fantastic know that a game. wounded cat is a very dangerous animal well they are yeah and they showed, you know, they showed tremendous levels I, I met, met Jackie Terry last November and he told me that he said their only focus was on the All-Ireland final. Nick, that's what they were looking at, Tipperary the following year. He said they were going on their team holiday early and they were getting their heads down and they were going to be training from November until they won the All-Ireland final. Nothing was going to stand in their way. And they peaked exactly. Michael Dempsey, the trainer, former Leeds footballer, has been a huge part of the backroom team with Martin Fogarty, a brilliant coach, and Brian Cody. But Michael Dempsey had them right for today. Their physical condition and absolutely brilliant. And it had to be. I think two fitter teams in Hurling probably never took the field in Crow Park. And you saw the hits going in there all day. And I have to say, maybe not up to the standard of the last two years but still a fantastic contest an absorbing contest that would have been very hard to achieve I think Michael the same uh, excellence we've seen in the last two years it was absolutely absorbing and compelling and Brian Cody his, the manager has led Kilkenny to victory for the eighth time in 11 All-Ireland finals over 13 years what an achievement People watching it all over the world right now are savouring the moment if they're Kilkenny fans. If you're hurling fans all over the world, I'm sure you're enjoying it as well. People like Kieran Whelan in Kampala watching the pictures here. And I'm sure he is enjoying what he's watching. And I hope if you're a Kilkenny fan and you're in some part of the globe right now and you think you're so far away from Croke Park, well, people are thinking of you, hoping you're enjoying what you've seen here. I know one of the head stewards down there, well, the head steward down there, Bill Barry, is today celebrating his 71st All-Ireland here at Croke Park, and our congratulations to him. The uh, Tipperary team, well, gallant in defeat. And, Jerry, you mentioned Brian Cody. I suppose you have to put Brian Cody and Henry Shefflin in the same breath. Henry Shefflin has started every single championship game since Brian Cody took over as manager, which is an incredible statistic. What a player over all the years, and last year he limped off the field, and I really felt we wouldn't see him back again. You know, with the injury, with you know the second time he did his cruciate, and to go away and the level of disappointment, and to come back and put in the effort at his age after everything he achieved in the game, to come back and have that hunger, and he's going to win his tenth All Star this year, no doubt. Tommy, Tommy Walsh is going to win his ninth in a row, and you know that there's an incredible team.